And happy birthday to Sheila. Happy birthday, Sheila. And we appreciate those who are jumping on Facebook Live momentarily. Those that will watch the replay, those that will watch the YouTube presentation, and also the audio versions that we have out there. So what I want to do tonight is continue in Mind Brain Connection. This is number 176. And I want to talk about the allegorical reality Oh, of Psalm 110. Is anyone Ooh. warm in here or is it just me? Just you. <laughs> so let's go to Psalm 110. This is a psalm, and then we're going to go to Revelation, the 19th chapter, and we're going to look at the Battle of Armageddon, what that is, because people teach, eschatology teachers teach. Psalm 110 as the Battle of Armageddon, and they teach Revelation 16, verse 16, and really all of Revelation 16, and also Revelation 19, portions of it. Woo. They teach it as the Battle of Armageddon. Now, if you study the Battle of Armageddon, do an etymology on the word Armageddon, it is not a literal war of Russia coming down to the Middle East or any nation invading any other nation, but what it means in the old Strong's Concordance, which I have two of, and in the older one, it says it's a battle right here in the mind. Wow. Yep. Armageddon is a battle in the mind. So as we look at Psalm 110, this is a psalm <laughs> of David, as I said, and what does David point to but Christ? Yes, yes ma'am. And Christ is what? <clears throat> Christ is in us, as us. Yeah. It is our anointed Christ mind of our right side. That's Christ. Yeah. And of course, we know that, that David was the second king of Israel, Saul being the first one. Saul representing anointed flesh that could only vex the enemies. David and then on into Solomon representing realized flesh that destroyed the enemies. Now, yes. we're not talking about destroying intellect or five senses or any of that, but the lower thoughts that try to filter through our feminine principle, oh, yes. as happened to Eve in the garden, mm -hmm. yeah. those thoughts are swallowed up by the fire of God or by the mind of Christ as we yield those lower yes. opposing yes. thoughts yes. to yes. the Christ mind that abides within us. <laughs> so David wrote this wow. song. Now, it says of David oh. in Acts 13, 36, that David slept after he had served his generation by the will of God. That was David's testimony. And so in Psalm 110, we're going to see four different aspects or four different main parts that not only apply to Jesus Christ, but how many know what's out of him instead of us? Yep. I believe that he did in his ministry, everything he did, he did as us. Even before we were here. Yeah. Even before we were spirits slowed down to visibility. What he did in the death, burial, and resurrection, he did as us. Yeah. You know, I still hold to crucified, died, buried, quickened, raised, seated, crucified, with, died, with, buried, with, quickened, with, raised, with, and seated with. But I hold to it in a different way today. Yeah. Yeah. He died and was crucified as to who we thought we were. Yeah. Yeah. And he resurrected as to who we always were. Amen. That's a great message right there. It's not penal substitution. It's no penal substitution. Because God didn't need any blood. But let me not get off on that. What we're going to see here in Psalm 110 are four main points. Number one, Jesus Christ is Lord and King. Prophetic invitation to reign when enemies are conquered. Well, guess what? We're kings and priests, too. Yes, we are. And we reign as we yield those lower thoughts. Mm -hmm. We reign in life by one Christ Jesus through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. So all of this applies to, yes, Jesus Christ, but him as us. So that's number one, Jesus Christ as Lord and King. He is king of us kings, Lord of us lords. Number two, he is shown as priest. He, when he resurrected, became priest after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. And guess what? We are priests after the order of Melchizedek. 
And what do priests do? They bring man to the Father. Absolutely. Not God to man. Right. Because right. God never left man. That's right. But we reconcile as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And I can break Melchizedek down. It's also the first part is the feminine principle. The last part of that word Melchizedek is the masculine principle. And the two join together. And then you experience that, that life. Wow. You truly experience that life because you've come to know him more than know about him. You've come to know him. Then number three, we see in Psalm 110, judgment and discernment of the nations. Okay? What are the nations? Well, today, but they were natural nations. Yeah. Today, but they were enemies that were people. Yeah. But to us, the nations are notions. <laughs> to us, the nations are notions and imaginations. And when we get into Revelation chapter 19, we'll look at a little bit of this a little later. Number four, the last part that we see in Psalm 110 is celebration over victory. Now, you and I do not have to wait to celebrate our victory. Come on! Because our rest, we're not trying to get into a celebration or a rest. Yes, we are the celebration by virtue of our oneness in him. But the celebration that we have tonight is celebration from yes. the work that has always been finished. Amen. So let's begin in Psalm 110. If you have your Bibles, your devices, whatever you use. Psalm 110, verse 1 says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. Now this is the Father speaking to Jesus and to us. And to us, sit thou at my right hand. In other words, rest by drawing from your right hand or from your right side. Yes. Rest, experiences, we already have rest, but only objectively. Experience rest as you draw from your Christ mind, as you yield the left side and draw from your Christ mind. You will experience rest when you do that by drawing from, as it says here, Sit thou at my right hand, being what? Our right side, our right hand, our Christ's mind. Yes. See, when Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do, and I only say what I hear the Father say, that was his feminine part, mm. his feminine principle, mm -hmm. wow. yielding to his Father within yeah. the Christ consciousness. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. When Jesus said, I only I say what I hear my father say, I only do what I see my father do, that was his feminine principle yielding to the masculine principle in him. How many know he's just like us? That's why he doesn't want worshipped. Yeah. He's our elder brother. Could I go so far as to say that he's part of the bride? Yes. He's part of the woman. Yes. In one sense, when God made man, he made him both male and female. Yes. Yeah. So Jesus had the feminine principle as yeah. well as we have the feminine principle. Yeah. And he showed us as an example that if we're going to rule and reign, we have to yield the feminine to the masculine. Yeah. And as we yield it, that's when we begin to reign that's right. in life that's right. by one Christ Super Jesus. Yeah. Then the rest of the verse states, until... Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now, who's the I there? I yourself. It's the I of your eternal I. Yes. It's the I of your Christ's mind. Yeah. So this reveals that the conquest of Christ's enemies is as effortless as removing a stool from one place to another. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. Have you ever moved a stool yeah. from one place to another? Yeah. Yeah. That's how easy it is concerning the carnal thoughts that try to oppose and rise up, Amen. concerning your intellect, reason, logic, ego, five senses, That's emotions. So when we draw from the Christ's mind, it's as easy as taking a stool and moving it from one place to another. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. And, and when doing it from rest, yeah. it's easy. And it's effortless it sure is. because we're what? Oh, we're drawing from that power.
power, mm -hmm. that energy, that life, right. that mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it brings order into our lives. It, sure does. it brings beauty into our lives. And listen to this. Until Christ's so-called enemies are under his feet, he is not in full rest. Right. He, as us, is not in full rest. Wow. Until the enemies are under his feet, which, wow. what are the feet of Christ? It's our feet. Right. See, as head he is, but as feet, he's not in full rest until we learn to yield every enemy. Yeah. Every enemy. And rule and reign. Rule and reign. See, Jesus is not coming back as religion is purporting out there right. to kick booty. <laughs> He said everything right. No, he gave the sons of men. He gave the earth to the sons of men. He sure did. And that's our job. Yes, it is. Yes. When, when God finished creation and he sat down, he handed the mantle over to creation. He did. He said, it's up to you now. You have dominion. That's right. You subdue. Yeah. You rule. Amen. You reign. Now, Hebrews 2, 8 and 9 says it this way. We do not yet see all things under his feet, and we're his feet, but we see Jesus, who is example. We see Jesus, who revealed that all things are objectively under our feet. So if all things are already objectively under our feet, then subjectively, as we draw from the right side, we will experience it in our walk. Amen. Not just our talk, mm -hmm. but in our talk and in our walk. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Now look at verse 2 of so Psalm good. 110. The Lord shall send the rod uh -oh. of thy strength out of Zion. Hello, Zion. Now, our rod, is, yes, is Jesus Christ. But our rod is our strength because our rod is also the Christ mind. Yep. It's the scepter of our might. It's our strength. It's our rest. It's our all. And notice the strength out of Zion. Zion is the highest consciousness, the highest place, and Zion is a people. Yes. So the rod of his strength comes out of a people well. that are in the highest consciousness Amen. and in the Christ mind. Amen. So the rest of verse 2 says, Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Now, again, to David, his enemies were a people and the nations. To us, their notions, their imaginations, and anything that would tempt our feminine principle or challenge our feminine principle, our notions and vain imaginations as far as the thoughts are concerned. Of course, then we have intellect and all those other things we've been talking about. But our victory can only come from one place, and that is from the Christ mind being activated, which as it says there in verse 2, is our rod of strength causing us to rule over the lower thoughts that would try to challenge and bombard and cause us to dwell in those lower thoughts. Because, listen, there's nothing... No lower thought can harm you right. until you dwell on it. you got to dwell on it. And if you dwell on it long yeah. enough, yeah. you're going to walk it. Thus dweller. Wow. Yeah. Thus dweller. You're going to walk it if you dwell on it long enough. That's why it's so important that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Come on, okay. Under the presence and in the presence of the Almighty. Yes. Yes. You can't dwell in those lower thoughts. But like, like I said before, the lower thoughts really have no stinking power until you dwell in it, then you give them power that yes. they never had. Never had any power. Now, we could go into the New Testament, we could look at the parables of Jesus, all of those parables that he spoke. Nearly every parable, the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats, the wedding garment, the sower sows the seed, all of those parables are parables of Jesus to show us this one thing. Yep. This one thing. Yep. And that is when your feminine principle is bombarded and challenged, just like Jesus was tempted. Yeah. When that happens, That's right. yield them to the Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 3. Yeah. Thy people shall be willing. Oh, mm -hmm. oh we're not going to do this because we're commanded? <laughs> <laughs> or we want brownie points with God, so we're going to yeah. clean up our act. And we're not that working, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Thy people shall be willing 
in the day of thy coming. Now, remember what Jesus said. He said, not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. Adam said the opposite. Yep. Not thy will, but mine be done. Mm -hmm. And do you know that the word Satan in the Hebrew actually means to learn by your own experience mm -hmm. rather than being led of the Spirit to Jeez. learn by experience. Wow. Satan, to learn by your own experience. Exactly what Adam did. Yeah. Not thy will, but mine be done. I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to learn by my own experience. So notice, thy people shall be, verse 3, willing in the day of thy power. What is the day of thy power? It's yeah. when you and I finally yeah. get gripped by and realize the importance yeah. of living from the right side by yielding the left and yes. marrying the two, the masculine and the feminine, yeah. together so you can birth Christ like the oh woman my. in Revelation yeah. chapter 12. Yeah. Yes. That's the day there, the day of your power, thy power. Yes. When you get this revelation yeah. within you that there's nothing more important Woo! than to understand and to realize the that the left the side Lord. needs to be yielded to the right yeah. so the two can be joined together. That's so good. The rest of the verse says, In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. I like this. The dawning of the new day. Yes. Where does it dawn? Right here yeah. in consciousness. It's beautiful. It's holy. And where does it take place? The womb, the virgin consciousness, and the womb of your heart awareness, which births then our victories over the lower thoughts, over anything of the left side in and of itself that tries to manifest in your life. Sure does. And then the last part of verse 3 states, Thou hast the dew of thy youth. In other words, when we learn this secret, you know what will happen? Mm -hmm. Vitality. <laughs> yes. You get a little pep in your step. Pep in your step, right? baby. Yeah. Your cells are quickened to life. Amen. Youthfulness comes. Yeah. It's where you run and you're not weary. You walk and you don't faint. You mount up as wings of eagles. And, and I don't like this so much that, you know, your youth is renewed because I think that's pretty much still Old Testament. Yeah. You realize, hey, I'm in the ageless one. I'm in the ageless one. And yes, when you realize that, yes, your youth can be renewed. Absolutely. You can experience that. Sure. But we must realize we are in the ageless one. Yes. The only reason we age and get decrepit and get age-related diseases because we think we have to. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We think we have to. Yeah. The reason we physically die is because they told us there's two things you got to do. You got to pay your taxes and croak. Yeah. Now you got to pay your taxes. Don't want to misunderstand. But listen, you don't have to die. Now I wrote a post the other day about immortality, and this is what I said. I'll be honest with you. Immortality is not just living in these bodies forever. Right. In fact, it's not that. It's not living in these bodies forever. There's two aspects to it. Immortality is if I do go and transition in my body, I didn't go by disease or accident. Amen. Amen. Yes. Number two, if we can leave in our awareness that three-dimensional awareness, which is time, space, matter, if we can leave that third dimension and come into the fifth dimension, like Enoch and Elijah did, yes. then we can be translated yes. and not see death. Yes. I believe there's a people that are going to experience yes. that. Yes. I believe there's a people that are going to experience that. Yes. Verse 4 of Psalm 110. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so, as we realize these truths regarding our Christ mind and the right side, we operate out of the power, because when it talks about Melchizedek, it says the power of an endless life. And as we operate out of the power of an endless life, 
which is one of the meanings of Melchizedek. And as I've already stated, Melchi, the first part, has to do with the feminine principle. Chesedek has to do with the masculine principle. Married together, that's when we begin to experience the power of an endless life. That's when we can leave the third dimension and come into the fifth dimension and experience that translation power like Enoch and Elijah did. And I'm convinced there were more people than Enoch and Elijah that experienced it. I'm convinced that there's other people. Now look at verses 5 and 6. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Oh, that sounds like a battle of Armageddon. <laughs> How many know that wrath means the passionate love of the Father? It doesn't mean he's angry at us. And he's going to start this war and all these things that, you know, eschatology preachers and teachers have taught us that have been totally false. But the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings. Through his passionate love for us, he has given us that ability, is what this is saying in verse 5, to yield those things. You do that through the power of the Spirit. Verse 6, he shall judge among the heathen. Our heathenistic thoughts are being judged. Thank God. You know, and I told you last week, until we come to the place to where we can judge those lower thoughts yep. and discern when we have lower thoughts, some people don't even know the difference, and so they just let those thoughts run wild. There's no harnessing of, a, of the lower thoughts whatsoever because they don't know that they're supposed to discern those things, that those things are death and will kill you spiritually. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. So, so these verses here depict our right-sided ruling and judging and discerning those thoughts that want to real that want to rule as kings in our life. And what do we do? We render them as dead. Your body of thinking becomes dead as you come to the understanding of these things that we're teaching here yes. and realize the importance. So even though David, to David, enemies were people, to us they're lower thoughts. Mm -hmm. They can even be your intellect that wants to rule. Mm -hmm. Your reasoning, your logic, your ego, your emotions, your five senses. But especially the lower thoughts that oppose mm -hmm. the truth that's written on your heart and upon your mind. Those things have got to be judged and they've got to be yielded and then the Christ mind destroys them. The fire of God, God is a fire, his word is a fire, burns them up. And that's where you see the lake of fire, which I'm not going to get into tonight. Now, verse 7, he shall drink of the brook in the way, therefore shall he lift up the head. Now, this last part, this is the fourth part. What is this? This lifting up of the head, drinking of the brook in the way. That's the celebration of victory as a result of living from the right side. Nice. Yielding the left and drawing from the right side. Hmm. Now, in Psalm 110, I want to connect it with Revelation chapter 19. If you go to Revelation chapter 19, because many eschatological teachers teach Psalm 110, along with Revelation 16 and Revelation 19, as the battle of Armageddon, which, again, in the Greek and in the Hebrew, is simply a battle in the mind. Absolutely. Not a literal war. Yes. It's a battle in the mind. Yes. And we'll see the similarities as we read a little bit here in Revelation chapter 19. We must remember one thing, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear someone say this, but we have to move from history, and if we don't move from history, we'll never come into mystery. Yeah. Right. We've got to leave the literal aspect. Was there nothing literal? Yes, there was. But we must leave focusing on the literal aspect and see the allegory, the parable, the dark sayings, the hyperbole. We've got to see those things because then we see how these things can happen in us. Otherwise, it happened to them. What good does it know? All of those Bible stories that you can read in the scriptures, what good does it know those things in a literal sense? But when you can understand and interpret them allegorically, then you can realize, oh, I can experience this too in an allegorical sense. Yes. 
So in Revelation chapter 19, we have to understand here that this is a spiritual document. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual document. Mm -hmm. The Bible was given not to predict wars and rumors and wars. In fact, in Matthew 24, it says, oh, you're going to hear about wars and rumors and wars. Yes, Don't be shaken know. by them. Amen. We're always going to hear about literal, natural rumors of war. Yeah. But what about the war? That rage is on the inside of yeah. our carnal thinking yep. and our left side. And also beside that, Revelation 1.1 1, 1 says that he sent and signified it. Yeah. What does the word signify mean? It's written in sign and symbol. Yeah. And then it says in chapter 1, verse 3, you're blessed if you read yeah. this stuff. How Absolutely. blessed are you yeah. if you're going to center up on a literal war somewhere in yeah. Ethiopia or over in India or yeah. wherever or Russia? And we feel horrible for, you know, what uh, Ukraine and what those people are going through. Certainly we pray for them on a daily basis, and I do. I see the whole earth full of the glory of God. That's the highest form of yeah, prayer you can yeah. pray for those people. Yeah. Highest form of prayer. So as we look at this, in, as we compare Psalm 110 with Revelation 19, and we see the parallels in these writings... The first half, I want to show you, we looked at four different parts of Psalm 110, but I want to show you the first eight verses of Revelation chapter 19 give us three things that we can rejoice about. Three things in Revelation 19, the first eight <laughs> verses, that we can rejoice about, about. So the first half of Revelation 19 is devoted to a scene where we have the last three songs of the apocalypse. Wow. What is the apocalypse? It's an unveiling. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a war. <laughs> yeah. It's an unveiling. Sure is. Yeah. And you're blessed when you experience yes. it. Yes. And you see the symbology. Right. Yeah. Yes. We're in an apocalypse right now. We're having an apocalypse right now. Absolutely. Yes. There is an uncovering. There is Come an unveiling as never before. And, you know, I've been having people ask me on Facebook, what do you think about the revival? And where is it? Kentucky Asbury. Uh, I'm not against it, but here's the thing. Here's my concern. I may have said this last week. What are they going to do when it's over? Right. Yes. They need someone to yes. teach them about their oneness. Yes. Not just go off and be a status quo Christian like they were before. Right. right. And that's my only concern. I could care less if they jump over the moon. I could care less if everybody in the house is well, I rejoice with them in this. Right. Yes. But what right. are you going to do That's right. when it's over? Right. 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 Yep. Now, Revelation 19. Yes, sir. Revelation 19, verses 1 through 8. Listen to what it says. And there are three things, three things here mm -hmm. that they're rejoicing about. And not only they are rejoicing about, but what we can rejoice about. Look what it says. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Now, that's not talking about some heaven on yonder, 50 million light years away. Heaven is the realm of spirit, including the spirit in us. Heaven is drawing out of the Christ mind of the right, right side. Yes. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Salvation and yes. glory and honor. Yes. Listen to this. And power unto the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. For true and righteous are his judgments, mm -hmm. his discernments, his de decisions, his determinations. For he hath judged the great whore. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, I remember. Uh, oh, when yeah. I was in the es you know, eschatology uh, teaching, oh, the great whore is the Catholic Church. Yeah. No. Great. <laughs> you could be the great whore right yeah. now. Yeah, go! If you're allowing the thoughts that oppose the truth no. to dwell within your heart awareness, because that's all the great horror is. It's sense consciousness, okay? So listen, they are rejoicing, okay? They're rejoicing over the judgment of the great horror. Now, like I said last Sunday, that's what we have to learn to do. Yes. Discern, make a decision concerning the great horror, the lower thoughts, okay? For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore. Okay? Yeah. That's us making the decision to judge the great whore. 
which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. So what it's saying here is that this heavenly group, which comprise of people who live from the heavenly realm of the Christ mind from Zion, are rejoicing because they have the ability to judge and discern the great whore. Amen. That is so good. The great whore being the lower thoughts, right. okay, so good. that want to fornicate. Oh, come on! With people's awareness. Listen, yeah. Christ will never lie with every thought in the city. No, right. Christ will never, your Christ will never fornicate Amen. and become a great whore right. with every lower thought in the city. In you, the city. City means consciousness. <laughs> that is so good. It will never happen. Yeah. So, in other words, you and I have got to judge, we've got to discern. Amen. Yes, we do. So here in these verses, in Revelation 19, how many did we read? Two verses are talking about a people that are rejoicing because they have the ability and the wherewithal to judge the lower thoughts when they come. Amen. Rather than just let anything like a parade go through. Yeah, circus. Like a circus, go through your awareness. And then after a while, you're going to dwell on them. You haven't yeah. judged them. Yeah, you haven't discerned right. them. You haven't right. made a, a decision, a determination about them. I'm going to yield them. That's the determination yeah. and the decision. Get them. That's the first song. Now, the second song is in verses 3 through 4. And again, they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke, and the smoke, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, and I'm not going to get into this, but the four and twenty elders, when you apply this, and we yeah. did in this Mind Brain Connection series, yeah. we did do some teaching in the book of Revelation and apply it to our physical body. Mm -hmm. I believe you can take every book of the scripture and apply it to spirit or to soul or to body. Yeah. There's one interpretation of the word, but the Jewish people, the ancient people, saw over 70 applications. I can't find 70. I mean, I have no idea what all they were thinking about. But I know one thing. You can take the book of Revelation and you can apply it to the body. And I, I'm very seriously thinking about ending mind-brain connection and getting into a new series of teachings. I'm still thinking about it. It's in the back burner. I've already done a little work on it. And I'm going to entitle it in the form of a question. What about those bodies? <laughs> People say, what about those cults? What about their team? What about those bodies? What about them bodies? Because we have been taught, religion has taught us that our physical bodies are less than our spirit. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Yep. Second Thessalonians, is it second or first? Yep. Thessalonians 5.23 yep. in the Amplified says, we are sanctified, deified, or you could say, we are spirit, slow down the visibility, or spirit through and through. Meaning, and I've said this, and it's just freaked people out over the years, not so much anymore, but it used to. Uh, your body is just as spirit as your spirit is spirit, oh, wow. and your soul is just as spirit as your spirit is spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, we may not be experiencing all of that right. yet, because we haven't fully awakened to that yet, but most in religion think, well, bless God, the body's you know, the least important to God, and so you just have to let it rot and go in the way of the grave, and you're in a better place, and all this stuff that they say about the body. And when I read about Paul the Apostle, he talks about an immortal body. He sure does. And incorruption, where it says we put on incorruption, what does that mean? Incorruption has to do not with the body, it has to do with this. So what is it when we put on incorruption? When we put on incorruption, we realize that our bodies, our spirits slow down yes. invisibly, or they are already immortal. Yes. Or oh, just not fully experiencing it. Always What does it say in 1 Timothy 6.16 in the Amplified? You and I are exempt from every kind of death. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And the biggest death that there is yes. is carnal thinking. Carnal thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And once we yield the carnal thinking, we judge yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And the first couple of verses, they're rejoicing because they have the ability to judge and know when lower thoughts are coming. Yeah. And here in verses 3 through 4, let me read it again because I got off track here, went down a rabbit trail. And again they said, Alleluia, 
and her smoke rose up forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders, or the twelve cranial nerves, hmm. yep. <laughs> counting the nerve and the root, you have twenty-four yep. cranial nerves, counting the nerve and the root in your head, okay? Four elders. And you could not think properly if you did not have those cranial nerves. Yes. And I know we talked about that in this series, but I'm, if I go into this series and I'm, you know, be thinking very heavily about, we're going to go through the whole book of Revelation, whole from chapter 1 all the way to 22, and we're going to apply it completely and totally to the physical body. Sure, and we're going to see some things. Now, I feel like in mind-brain connection, what I said when I taught in Revelation, the little bit that I said when I applied it to the body was preparatory for what we're going to have in yeah. the next series. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Lord willing. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So the four and twenty elders, okay? Twelve cranial nerves, twelve on the right, twelve on the left. And four beasts, and that's not talking about a barnyard animal there. It's talking about living creatures expressing life out of their physical bodies. Your body is a vehicle of expression. Yes. Yep. Yes. That Father gave you. And that's why your spirit slowed down to visibility. And that's why you're immortal. We appear mortal. But beneath the surface, if you can see it in spirit, Amen. you are immortal already. Amen. Okay, so look what happened. The four living creatures expressing life fell down. Oh, wait a minute. The four living creatures and the 12 cranial nerves yielded. They yielded, they fell down, they yielded, they worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Hallelujah. So what I hear in this is everything about us from the left side, everything about us must yield unto the Christ or unto the Christ mind. Everything about us, 12 cranial nerves, everything, intellect. How many times have you and I thought something was a good idea? <laughs> Because we reason stuff out. Right? Or our intellect said, yeah, that's good. Do this. Do that. Do the other. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and do it. Without ever yielding it. Right. And asking our Christ mind, is, is this the direction for us to go? So here we have in verses 3 and 4 this song that is repeated again the second time. The first time Listen, it was about the judgment, because we have to be able to discern these lower thoughts. But this time, the second song is about the destruction. Mm -hmm. Their smoke, see, went up mm -hmm. forever and ever. So they're rejoicing because they have the ability to judge and know when lower thoughts are rising up and tempting and challenging their feminine principles. Right. But then, when those lower thoughts that oppose the truth are destroyed, oh, yay! I'm going to rejoice over that. Right? Now, there's another song here. And again, this is Armageddon. What it, it's the challenge of the battle of the mind. That's what it was in Psalm 110. That's what it is here in Revelation chapter 19. Now, if you read, in fact, let me just read this. If you read in Revelation 16, 16 through 21, and let me just read uh, verse 16, it says, And they gathered them together to the place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. And what this is talking about in chapter 16, and we taught this several times, are the seven vials that are poured out. Yes. Yeah. And they all were positive yes. because they all were truth about the blood. And then if you read in verse 15, verse 1, it says they're marvelous. Marvelous. Oh, wait a minute. If it's bowls of wrath being poured out on us, how could they be marvelous, George? And then it goes on in chapter 16, and it talks about the hell. Well... My Bible says the hell sweeps away the refuge of lies. Yes. <laughs> then it talks about the thunderings in chapter 16, and the lightnings, and the earthquake. What is the thundering? It's the word that's thundering out. Amen. What is the lightning? It's the spirit quickening it within you. Amen. What is the earthquake? It's the manifestation of that that comes forth out of all of that. Yes. 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 Yes.
<laughs> so you don't see anything about literal wars so in the book of Revelation. Man. Show me a place and I'll eat it. Well, <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> but you won't. You won't. You won't. Only if you're interpreting it literally. Right. Now, here's the third song in verses 5 through 8 of Revelation 19. And a voice came out of the throne. What is a throne? A place of rulership. Object. Listen, what does Isaiah say? The throne is in our heart. Right. Objectively. But now if we want to rule from the throne, subjectively, we create that throne. We yeah. sure do. We create that throne by drawing out of the right side. So a voice came out of the throne, place of rulership, saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear or reverence him, both small and great, doesn't matter what your spiritual status is. This is for all men. Verse 6, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of, I love this, many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, yeah. for the Lord God, in a people, as a people, omnipotent reigneth. Yeah. Wow. Not a God out there. Yeah. The God, the Christ in us, omnipotent reigneth. Yes. Look what over. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage yeah. of the Lamb. Now listen, the word Lamb is Lamekin. It's you and I. Yes. It's come. In other words, we judge the lower thoughts. The lower thoughts were consumed by the fire of his word and by our Christ mind. So that now masculine and feminine can be married together and joined together subjectively. Amen. Amen. And it doesn't stop there. And his wife, our feminine principle, made herself ready. Verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Fine linen. Clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So in Psalm 1, we're rejoicing because we have enough understanding and we can judge between the thoughts. Yep. You know, strong meat belongs to them, Hebrews 5.14, who by reason of use have their senses exercised or stripped naked mm -hmm. to discern both good and evil. Right. Not between good and evil there, but both good and evil. Yep. Realizing what? The good that we want and the good that Jesus did was not the good on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but it was the esoteric good, the intrinsic good, the good that came from the tree of life. Yes. So we know the difference. So strong meat belongs to those of us who by reason of exercise or use have done this enough times that we're familiar with it, and we almost do it effortlessly. Amen. It's so good. In fact, I believe it will be effortless yes. as time yes. goes on. Amen. So the first song we sing here in Revelation 19 is the fact that I'm rejoicing because I know when a thought comes, I know when I'm trying to yeah. rule out of my intellect or my reason, my ego, or my logic, or my five senses, I, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost instantly, I know. Yeah. I rejoice over that. That's yeah. the first thing. Yeah. The second one is that I understand when I draw from my Christ's mind at least the lower thoughts are going to be destroyed. You're right. right. That's good. The intellect isn't destroyed. The things God gave us aren't destroyed. They're yielded. But the lower thoughts yeah. that oppose the thoughts of who I am and what I have right. and, you know, all of that, That's right. those things are destroyed. Amen. And then the third song here is the fact. We're rejoicing over the fact that masculine and feminine can now be joined together. Because yeah. Yeah. that's when... They're joined together, and when they're one. Now, a few more things I'm going to close. It's interesting here that the bridal attire is notably different from the great whore's attire. <laughs> what is the great whore? The lower thoughts. Yeah. Not the Catholic Church, not some denomination. <laughs> All of us, if we still can't judge and discern when the lower thoughts come. Right. So the bride, it says, wears glistening white. It says pure linen, which is symbol. Now listen to this. Candy, you got to hear this. I'm here. We talked about it today. <laughs> it says pure linen, and it is symbols of righteous acts. Oh! Because it's on the outside. Amen. Righteous acts. Amen. It's clothing. Amen. 
Mary. The bride is clothed. Man, that's good. In the linen, in linen or clothing is that which is on the outside that people so see. Good. Amen. That people see. Amen. So it is important. Now, like I've been saying lately, you know, it's not about, it's not about trying to be moral. No. Certainly not about immor immorality. No. It's about the Christ life. It's Christ yes. And when you live the Christ life, Amen. morality will just, just naturally, naturally be the happen. result. Amen. That's yes. plain and simple. Amen. Don't let me get started on that. No, don't let me get started on that either. <laughs> now, the great Mary. whore, the great whore in Revelation 17, 4, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So what was she doing? She was fornicating with lower thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Christ will never fornicate with every thought in the city. Right. Okay? Oh gosh, I hope you guys So get listen, the, the, <laughs> if we so can good. compare the golden cup with the silver cup. Oh, the golden oh, and yeah. silver. One is empty. Yes. Yeah. Remember Joseph? Oh, yeah. With the empty cup, silver yeah. redemptive cup, into yeah. yes. Benjamin, the son of the right hand, yeah. sack, the yeah. son of the what? Right, right hand. hand. Yeah. Those who draw from the Christ mind. Amen. And I think this is so cool That's where good. it talks about this great horror's awareness is full of abominations. And I remember not too long, well, it has been a long time ago, I taught in Matthew 24 where it talks about the abomination of desolation. Mm -hmm. Sitting in the holy place. Yes. What is the abomination of desolation? Oh, well, it's when, you know, this war and that war oh and people God, come and do... No, oh, the God. abomination of desolation oh, is simply God. when you're desolate where your thoughts are conceived. Right. It's, a, it's an abomination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Desolate yeah. illusion. Yeah. Oh, war yeah. that's good. It is. Amen. Wow. So when you compare the cup that's full of abominations... Oh my With God. the cup that was empty, that was mm. placed wow. by Joseph into Benjamin's sack, the son of the right hand, mm -hmm. you begin to realize. There's my answer. And listen, oh the God. empty cup can also represent the fact that Lord. Jesus told us a lot of things to do. You know, yeah. I've said many times he didn't want us to worship him. He was, as son mm -hmm. of man, he was Jesus. As son of God, he was the I am, the eternal Christ. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Jesus, he, he came to reveal the Father. He did not want us to worship him. He wanted us to follow him by simply doing what he told us to do. Right. And one of the things he told us to do, besides meditation, going into the closet, loving your enemies and your enemies being your you know, lower thoughts, yes, love them into yes. the right side. Yes. Absolutely. We're not yes. fighting or binding or loosing right. or doing all that sort of a thing. But what he was saying here and what I want to bring out concerning the empty cup is that part of that has to do with becoming empty and being childlike. Oh, that's Amen. so good. Wow. Yeah. And Jesus told us, yes. you will not enter yeah. until you experience subjectively the kingdom if you're not childlike. Yeah. 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 Now, then in verses 17 on in Revelation chapter 19, this is where the eschatology ministers minister about a literal war as well as with, within Psalm 110. But as I mentioned, Armageddon in Greek simply means the battle of the mind. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, as it goes on, I'm just going to quote a few things here and then we're going to close. Mm -hmm. As it goes on in verses 17 and 18 of Revelation 19, it talks about an angel of light. How many know angels are our thoughts? Yes. I'm not saying they don't ever manifest outwardly. Yeah, I've seen angels, but I'm just simply saying angels of light, thoughts are angels that come to us. But it says there that an angel of light tells, this is 17 and 18 of Revelation 19, tells the fowls to fight against the army as in a literal war. But it's not a literal war. Because when you look up the word fowls in the Greek, it means a female domesticated animal or fowl. The feminine. Mm -hmm. It's foul thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> it's foul thoughts. Foul and then it goes on there and it refers to the flesh of kings. That's where bird brain comes Are you kings tonight? <laughs> the flesh of kings. The flesh of captains. The flesh of mighty men all referring to lower fleshly 
scientific thinking from the left side in and of itself. And then in verses 19 through 21, we see that all of that is cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And the lake of fire, fire being P-U-R, just means a cleansing that takes place. Like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, 12, having all the wood, hay, and stubble burned out of our false ideas and our false sticking thinking and so forth. And then brimstone is theon in the Greek, and it means God. Fire and brimstone. It's sulfur, yes. It's divine Godhead. It means given by inspiration of God. Sulfur was a, I don't know if they still use it, but a healing agent. I remember yeah. taking sulfur uh, when I had tonsillitis as a kid. It tastes horrible. Uh, it's a healing agent. So this battle, listen, this battle does not kill people, but it destroys the lower way of yes. thinking. Yes. And it's the fire of the word that's written upon our heart, not just your Bible. Right. The word that's written upon our heart and our mind. Yeah. It's that word when activated by drawing from the Christ mind that burns up all the wood, hay, and stubble and the lower thoughts. Amen. It's a consuming fire. Yep. Consuming fire. Man. Man. It burns. Burn, burn baby, baby burn. Yes. I knew she was going to say that. It burns. So, just in a little recap, the four parts we looked at in Psalm 110 connect with the three songs in Revelation 19, verses 1 through 8. And remember I said that eschatology preachers and teachers teach the Battle of Armageddon from Revelation 16, Revelation 19. They go to Daniel and Ezekiel also, but Psalm 110. So the four parts in Psalm 110 are part one, we are kings and lords that rule from our right side. Mm -hmm. Part two, we are priests that reconcile man to God, not God to man. We reconciles. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter five says. Part three, we discern the lower thoughts, or when we are operating from mere intellect, reason, and emotion, five senses, we discern that. And thank God we have the ability to discern that. That's number three. Part four, we celebrate from a victory that's already been won. And let me just say. Because I know what a lot of people say. Yeah, the victory was in Jesus' death, burial, resurrection. The victory was from before the foundation. Yeah. We forgot it. Amen. Jesus revealed it. He exposed yeah. the lies in his death. The veil was rent. Yeah. We're all here. Yeah, yeah. And in his resurrection, yeah. we gather our faculties, Amen. mind, will, intellect, and so Amen. forth. Amen. Intellect, emotion, yeah. thought, all that. We gather our faculties. And resurrection means the discovery Discovery. of spiritual truth. And then the four, the three parts in Revelation, we sing, we rejoice, because the great whore in us has been judged. The great whore has been judged. We sing because the great whore, that's the only thing in us that's destroyed, it's the lower thoughts that oppose the truth. The rest is you. Right. So we sing because, number one, the great whore has been judged. By us? Yes. Number two, we sing hallelujah yes. because yes. the great whore yeah. has been destroyed. That's right. And we sing because then yes. when the destruction takes place, when the judgment and the destruction of it takes place in us, in not us. some God out here, but in us, Man. the two come together. Two we rejoice together. because of the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. 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 For she has made, made herself, herself ready. ready. Yeah. Yes. The marriage supper of what? The wife and the lamb, again, it's lamekin, yeah. which is all y'all, mm -hmm. people. Amen. People. Man. Wow. Father, wow. we thank you wow. for your truth. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your word. Yes, yes, Lord. Thank you for who you are yes. in us, as us. Yes. Thank you for the ability to judge. Yes, Lord. Yes. And that, that which we judge will be destroyed when it's yielded. Thank you for the quickening spirit and power within us Amen. that is conceiving this yes. our virgin consciousness yeah. and heart awareness Amen. causing it to not only be conceived but quickened yep. made alive right. to us yes. that we can walk it yes. and subjectively experience yes. it. Amen. Thank you for those that are here, those that are watching via Facebook Live. Thank you. We bless you and we honor you in the name of the Lord.